At a time when mellow was cool, the Australians were anything but. Confident to the point of cockiness, brash beyond belief, their noisy arrival prompted some to wonder just how many Aussies on a small island constituted critical mass. You know, the Australians, when they started coming to the North Shore, you know, and uh, there was like a different uh, mindset on their approach. You know, I mean, our approach was go out there, you sort of wait for the best wave, you know, you don't waste your time on those waves, you wait for the best one, you get the best one, you ride it the longest, and then the whole, the whole little group of Aussies came over here and it was like just tear apart anything, catch anything, <laughs> just whatever's moving, just rip it to shreds, you know. I just got a bit out of hand, used to drop in, used to take a lot of waves, pissed a lot of people off. My attitude in the water was probably a bit over the top. Um, I definitely took too many waves. Australians are pushy people. I mean, if you know, you know, they're, they like to talk about how great they are and you know, this and that, and I don't know why, but they do. It doesn't matter what sport it is. Aussies like kicking the shit out of other countries. We'll play really, really hard within the rules, as hard as you can go. But at the end of the day, we like to shake hands, you know, have a beer, and it's over. The Australians are very competitive people, almost paranoia. We, so they compete in, sometimes in areas where you don't need to compete. Uh, you know, I never lost to Australians. I used to beat them regularly. Oh, that really pisses them off. <laughs> there was many other Australians that had come to the North Shore prior to 74, 75. Like, this attitude that, that we saw happening was unique, and it didn't exist prior to those years was just sort of like three crazy, four crazy Aussies that just went for it everywhere. And, you know, we just went nuts. Because when you're brought up in Australia, and you know, you're a young grom, you get worked by the older guys. And you get berated mentally and verbally and sometimes physically, and you just get yelled at. And you, if you don't learn how to stand up for yourself and say, oh, fuck you, you know, this is, you know, you, you, know, you, you get a sort of verbally fight. That's, that's how you're brought up as Australian. So, you know, we're culturally just very, very different to this sort of, uh, you know, calm and, you know, I guess we sort of came in and rocked the boat. A handful of surfers in the world might have been scraping a living out of doing what they loved, but for most, the concept of a professional surfer was somewhat abstract, even a little contradictory. Surfing reflected sort of a counterculture idea, that there was this mainstream way of doing things and looking at things, and uh, the coolest of the cool would kind of forego, you know, our normal job, and, and let's just kind of escape and get away from normal society, and that was kind of what's going on, and then this new group came along and said, no, no, we're not gonna do that at all. In fact, we wanna bring professionalism we want to make surfing into a sport. Everyone turned around and just went, they want to do what? There was no such thing as pro surfers. Because you couldn't make a living from pro surf. It was more of a fantasy <laughs> to get paid to surf. The sport had no structure. We were, we were uh, just a rabble. There was a few contests here and there, but there was no organized circuit. There was no organized really schedule. Somebody was talking about a surf contest they want, and they want a, a you know, a can of Spam and like a six pack of Coke or something. It was pretty simple. A professional surfer back then was pretty basic. And if you could pay your rent or pay your mortgage um, and travel a little bit, that was about, that was it. That was max. The general population, you know, in the 60s and the 70s thought that anyone who surfed was a total no hope I don't think they understood anything about what was going on. They, they thought we were a bunch of long-haired guys. Hippie, counterculture, not part of society, you know, dropouts, hopeless, don't want any education. In fact, I went to get a loan to buy this place and I talked to the bank manager and everything was fine until I told him what I did. I shaped surfboards and he sat back and started laughing. And that's 
pretty much sums up the attitude. People did not take you seriously. The image that came out of the Summer of Love era was that surfers were uh, just really druggies. <laughs> druggies that happened to surf. From a very early age, I wanted to change surfing. Um, I just wanted to be able to walk down the street in Coolangatta and have respect as a surfer. Nothing